On this video, it shows step by step on how to repaste, how to change the thermal pads and thickness of the pads, how to replace and clean the cooling fans, and upgrade option of this laptop. Hello guys, it's me again, Take That Screw Out. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing and click that thumbs up icon and notification bell. Thank you. Check the description below for the equipment and tools I use in this video which is available to purchase in Amazon.com in United States and Amazon.co.uk in United Kingdom. So let's begin the tutorial. This laptop is brand new and still sealed from the manufacturer. So before we begin, I have to, to have a quick unboxing. Seal is still intact, look. Seal's broken. Okay. still got the car plastic cover The screwdriver that I'm going to use is a valve stick electric screwdriver and the screw bits is a Phillips screw VH1. And then first you have to unscrew 11 screw. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. When opening up a back cover, always use a prying tools like this or like this. I prefer a plastic one. There are some prying tools which is a metal, but I don't prefer to use that one because it could damage easily the plastic bits or scrape off the paint. So the safest way to use is the plastic prying tools. And then insert this one here so that it will not gonna So this is the cover which is made of metal very sturdy and strong So these are the upgrade options of this laptop. This is the stuck one. That is the Drive C M.2 NVMe SSD. And there's an empty slot spare if you want to add more. So this one, this is the second one here. And two RAM slot can be upgraded, I believe. The chipset on this laptop can support up to 128 gigabyte or 64 gigabyte 
and then the Wi-Fi card can be upgraded as well but this one is already Wi-Fi 6 and the battery is removable that's it that is the only upgrade option and of course you can change the thermal pads and thermal paste the cooling fan I'll show you later the exact model of the cooling fan and let's begin to disassemble the components and first first thing to do always remove and disconnect the battery first always so the battery connector is this one so to remove the battery you have to push this connector towards me to that direction just be gentle with it so battery is off okay so we have to unscrew two screw for the battery one and two okay so this is the the model of the battery if you want to replace yours and then we have to remove the RAM and then NVMe SSD The Wi-Fi card. And this is the CMOS battery. And this one is for the ribbon connector for the trackpad. If you want to disconnect the ribbon, this kind of connector, you just flick this black thing flick it up so like that like that same thing with this one flick it up flick it up this wire here this connector is for the LCD screen and then to remove the heatsink and the fan you have to unscrew for the fan one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 11 screw that you have to remove to to remove the heatsink and both fans but before you remove both fans you have to disconnect the fan connector which is this one and this one just push this black connector towards that direction so it's very handy if you have two of these with a pointy end and the other one is flat it's gonna be very handy so be gentle push it in like so but if sometimes there's different kind of connector or if you struggle to use this I recommend to use this is so handy to remove a fan connector this one I'll, I'll give you sample how to use this one actually I have two of these like that you just it's a bit tricky because of the screw like so and this one as well grab it and then push it that direction okay connector fan connectors are removed so we have to unscrew 11 screw and then 
group for the hit sync. So I'll take this tape off because the wire for the LCD screen is attached to this side. So we have to remove the connector for the easily screen so that it could go through. The manufacturer used a like a sticky, it's like a thermal paste, but a sticky one for the VRAM. This one. This is not a thermal pads. It's like a paste. That's fat. I feel good. You look great. This one is a thermal pads. This one is a pads. This one's pads, this one's just like a paste, but it's uh, sticky. So this is the thickness of the thermal pads. So this one here, this one here, this one here, this, this, this is one millimeter. So this one here, they are the same. And this area here, this is for the VRAM. They're not using the a thermal pads. They instead they use a like um, thick thermal paste. But we, we could still get the measurements of this one. Equivalent to one millimeter. So if you if you use a thermal pad instead to replace this one, you can use a one millimeter for the VRAM. This area here that they use the paste. But it looks like this area here is quite thick so I believe this one is about 1.5 it's difficult to be sure because this is not a thermal pad but you can see the thickness here on the side is about 1 millimeter to 1.5 see 1.5 is now 1.5 is so thick this is definitely the user 1 millimeter same with this one this one is one millimeter, the thermal pads, and this paste is equivalent to one millimeter, same. So if you use a thermal pads for this one to replace, just use one millimeter thermal pads. And for the cooling fan, this is the this is the right side. That is the right side. That is the model of the fan for the right side and for the left side that's for the left side <clears throat> so it's time to clean up and to clean all this mess so I decided because I don't have enough one millimeter thermal pads with me if I will replace all this area here that the manufacturer use like a thick thermal paste my available one millimeter thermal pad is not enough for all of this so I decided I have to retain this area and then because this is a brand new one it's not been used so I'll just return this one this is still fresh 
what I'm going to replace only is the thermal paste for the CPU and the GPU and this one I have to retain this one so I can still reuse this one just to remind you this one is equivalent to one millimeter thermal pads if you want to replace it with thermal pads use one millimeter so catch me if I fine it looks fine okay it's time to clean up the residue by the way if you have dust in your cooling fan and your PCB I normally use a X power air blower which is 500 watt I will just put the link in the description below if you're interested it's very very powerful one and to clean up the residue I normally use a 99.9 percent .9 isopropyl alcohol don't use 60 percent or 70 percent because it doesn't dissipate quickly 99.9 .9 percent dissipate quickly it's more safer to use If you ask if you could use a liquid metal to replace the thermal paste instead I don't recommend li liquid metal because for this reason the heat sink is a copper this the heat sink for the CPU and GPU are copper and copper are not good for liquid metal because there there will be like a chemical reaction it doesn't stick with the copper and some heatsink are aluminium or aluminum which is really really bad for liquid metal it with it will corrode the aluminium so liquid metal is only good if the heatsink is pure metal like this one a stainless steel or something like this yeah you can use but this one is copper so don't don't use a liquid metal for this laptop there was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room and Damn, what a hell of a view I feel good, you look great So I will not gonna clean this one because this is still part of that one So no need to clean Like you, I can't wait A first time, a first day You're so fine, I'm so late You sip wine, I drink straight So to clean the fan and the PCB, I normally use that air blower that I mentioned earlier and or just a normal paintbrush. Just brush the dust off. But always best to use the air blower because there's a lot of areas here, especially inside that the rest normal brush cannot reach. So, but I will not gonna do this one because this laptop is brand new it's not been used still a virgin so okay it's time to put it back together the thermal paste that I'm going to use is the SYY thermal paste which is a really good one and also I have recommendation the the Arctic MX6 or MX5 it's fine MX6 is the latest one I think they are really really good that's what I've used normally in the past but I ran out I have this which is equivalent the same performance and also this really good one a bit pricey um, the Noctua NTH2 that's a really good one so that's my recommendation for the thermal paste but on this video I'm going to use the SYY thermal paste which is fine it's a really good one Okay, so it's time to put it back, the hit sync again. So 
So don't forget this two wire for the Wi-Fi card. Have to insert that. And for the monitor screen. Said I'm falling fast. Don't remember life before you. That's fast. And then the wire. Make sure it's clear. You look great. I like you. Before you drop the heat sink, make sure the screw, all the screw is aligned. Things align now. Perfect. This one goes here. A first time, a first day. You're so okay, so this time we have to follow the sequence for the screws. This numbering up to seven. So says so one here, so this is the number one that we're going to screw it in. Don't screw it in fully, just few tones, maybe three tones first, and then jump to number two three turns one two three and then four or uh, one two three three turns one two three then four one two three if i've screwed in the heat sink i don't normally use the the power i use it manually so that i could control it the turns so one two three four five one two three Six. One, two, three, seven. Last one. One, two, three, and then back to one. One, two. So you have to place this one back to its original position. That's it. And the Wi-Fi cable. I feel my heart erase. So catch me if I fall. Okay, and then the four screw for the fan. Okay, and then Connect the monitor connector. Then the fan connector. Nice and gentle. And then the other fan. This wire goes here. Then the RAM. So the first RAM goes here. And then the second RAM. So this chipset, it could support up to 128 gigabyte. 64 gigabyte is sufficient, even if you're a video editor. It's more than enough. Even 32, even 32 gigabyte RAM is more than enough if you're a content creator. 4K, 4K video editing, at least 32. 16 gigabyte is if you're editing videos. 16 gigabyte will sometimes struggle. If it is 4K, if it is 1080p videos, is fine with 16 gig, but I recommend 32 at least if you're editing 4K. So the Wi-Fi card. This is Wi-Fi 6, I think. Yeah, killer. It's a killer brand Wi-Fi. The white one first goes to the white indicator here. Click. And this one should click as well. So 
so the wire goes here this holds the wire in place so that it will not gonna move make sure it's connected properly is very important otherwise you cannot get a good quality signal or you cannot get a signal at all so and then the M.2 SSD which is NVMe it's a Samsung one Samsung so it goes here and yeah I mentioned that earlier you can have an additional N.2 SSD as well in here so that's gonna be a future upgrade if you want to so to NVMe SSD so before I have to put it back the battery I have to check all the connector is disconnected properly fan fan both fan are connected Wi-Fi Wi-Fi monitor yeah everything is connected this is the CMOS battery speaker mm. yeah looks good so it's time to put it back the battery so this is the battery and then connect the connector good when you connect the battery make sure the blue line will touches in the metal plate because that's the the mark so everything's connected mm -hmm. check the rotation of the fan make sure it doesn't touches anything actually the fan I noticed is different this one is a bit thicker this one is so fine they're not the same the fence of this fan is metal and this one the one on the right is plastic the metal one is designed for the to call off the GPU and this one is close to the CPU which is this one is more efficient maybe uh, that's why they designed the one is it's time to cover up Pull it back the cover, metal cover. Before we screw in, make sure it sits properly. Push in. Clicks. Sounds really good. I will start from the middle. So that's the end of the tutorial. If you did enjoy and find this video helpful, please consider subscribing, share the video so it could help others too, and click that thumbs up icon to help this channel to make more helpful tutorial videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching.